what's up guys and welcome back to the podcast my name is robbie cassidy and today we're going to discuss managing arthritis or managing osteoarthritis more so okay and osteoarthritis is a more common one it's the one that you will generally come across in older people uh, and some people obviously get early onset as well so in this episode i want to just talk a small bit about what you can do to help it and what you can do to improve your condition uh, and I guess what you can do to reduce the likelihood that you suffer from it as you get older because in general what it is is wear and tear with inflammation in the joints okay and I don't mean to simplify it but that is what it is Um, and if we can look at maybe different longevity practices of how we can manage it and how we can improve it well then we can set ourselves up for being less likely for it to inhibit what we do as we get older okay and some people listening to this may have family or friends who are struggling with it at the moment and at least then you will either be able to give them options on what they can do or you can maybe implement some of these practices to help them um, overcome it and help them get into better shape now just before we jump in uh, for those who are interested so basically i work one-to-one uh, long term with people who are struggling with a chronic injury or, or a recurring injury or an injury that's going on for let's say a couple of months a couple of years and they just really struggle to get over it okay so this could be things like it could be hip pain it could be back pain it could be arthritic pain i suppose in line with this episode it could be shoulder pain that you've had multiple dislocations or foot or ankle whatever it is just get in contact let me know and we or i will uh, discuss with you what options you have and uh, we can make a bit of a plan and then if it's something that you want to go forward with we can talk through how we work that if not there's no problem at least you'll have a good idea of what you can be working on or focusing on uh, yourself so just reach out and send me a message if you're interested in that so to jump right into this episode uh, I was as I was saying I want to talk a small bit about the main problems that people are struggling with or, or that struggle with with arthritis and then i want to go into like a few solutions of what you can do to improve it um in your own time so to jump into it the main problems that you will see with osteoarthritis now one of the most common symptoms is that you have pain and stiffness in the morning for about an hour after you get up now that can be a common symptom with a lot of things as well so i wouldn't put it down to that uh, and anyone who's listened to this thinking jesus do i have it i would first go get it diagnosed by a doctor or get it diagnosed by a physio but as you listen to this podcast you'll you'll hopefully get an understanding that in general you will know if you have it or not um, and if you do it's not a huge issue if you manage it properly so that's kind of the goal of the podcast is that you can get a better understanding of what you can do for it as well now as i said that you're going to have pain and stiffness in joints now it's it's very common in the hips and knees you'll get it in the neck in the knuckles or the fingers i should say in the wrists as well uh, ankles sometimes in the back as well common places to get it but really the same principles apply across the board of what you have to do no matter where you have it okay and in general it's, it's having good lifestyle habits that will help you uh, to get over or overcome it now some of the risk factors or some things that, that contribute to it would be like obesity uh low activity um poor diet poor sleep poor hydration all the standard ones but really what it is is it's a as i was saying it's like a sign of aging okay in general so it's like having gray hair and it's like having wrinkles in your skin it doesn't always mean that it's a death sentence it's not a problem it's not a huge issue if you manage it properly and you can improve it all the time i would be looking away from medications as much as possible uh, with this unless you're abs- absolutely necessary to get them but when you get an understanding that it is just an age-related chain with change with increased inflammation then you can look at first well age-related changes how do we target that and how do we work on that and then inflammation what do we do for that as well okay and a lot of it's the same so you're looking for consistent longevity practices really now other problems you're going to have you'll you'll often see is they'll have low activity levels so they won't be exercising as much anymore uh they'll reduce the amount of movement that they do now this comes both ways it's a vicious cycle you stop moving and then you get pain and then you start moving and you're going to have pain because 
of the fact that that inflammation is there as well and 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 the joint is sore so you do reduce your movement and your activity because of the pain but you do have pain because you reduce your movement and activity and it's it's important to get an understanding of that now people a lot of the time once it starts to build up they will start to stop exercising and stop activities and stop high impact activities just in case they make it worse okay so see that vicious cycle where it happens and then you stop everything to make in case you make it worse but as we know from previous podcasts pain itself isn't always very easy it's very complicated to be honest what is contributing to it and why it's happening and to not have an understanding of pain or what pain is will affect you when these things kick up as you get older because you can maybe look to avoid the activities as opposed to when you should be pushing into the activities at some stages to to make sure that you are able to sustain what you're doing long term okay so as i said you're going to reduce your movement because you're going to want to avoid pain and discomfort of having it in the first place and that's a big thing as well with injuries and with with pain let's say back pain it's a huge one that people have a fear of re-injury they have a fear of pain and because of that then they stop moving and their rehab process gets very complicated then because they're fearful of making it worse and they're fearful of of actually having the pain and the pain sticking around for a couple of days and then the fact that well if i have if sticking around for this long i must have made it worse and i must have re-injured myself so i'm gonna have to stop doing what i did before okay which actually leads you down the road of limiting the amount of activity that you do or reducing the amount of activity that you do overall and as we know with that then it's going to cause things to kick up so with oa you'll have it that obviously everyone gets it or not everyone there's a large percentage of people get it the older you get when you're over 70 years old i think it's 80 percent of people have signs of it uh, and signs of it on an mri even though that doesn't matter a a shite to be honest if you have signs of it on mri it's like having degenerative disc disease that you always see if someone gets a a back scan it's just a sign of aging there's no need to they, they always put it in there though just in case so radiological evidence of it without pain is no problem at all and i was actually just talking to a lady today who was saying that she had five bulging discs in her neck with no pain at all so what does that tell you it just goes to show that pain is multifactorial it's very complicated and it's not as simple as that's there so now i have to have pain okay and if we understand that that's how we make the change that's the first step to making the change is knowing that pain doesn't always mean that it's getting worse so the lifestyle factors of like usually when these things kick up lifestyle factors start to start to go down down as well so what you'll have is like they'll stop drinking a lot of water uh, their their hydration will be very poor they will start to eat a lot more processed foods now we'll talk through other foods that are a bit that are, that, that can affect you later on but pro- processed foods trans fats things like that which are not healthy anyway they can cause or you can see an increase in inflammation from those foods so it is important to look at that and look at at reducing those as much as possible and just looking for healthy whole foods now i'm not going to preach on nutrition or or diet because it's definitely not my scope of practice um and i'll admit that always but in a general sense and it's the same the rules of, of health are fairly simple in that get moving and eat healthy drink enough water enjoy things that you do okay move eat and uh, healthy foods enjoy what you do whether it be with family or friends have a social circle that you're secure in um sleep sleep well and get enough sleep uh and that's basically it drink enough water they're they're all very simple things but i'll go into the nitty-gritty and i have done in many podcasts before i've talked about the specifics of them but when you keep those in the back of your mind you will get a better idea how to improve your health long term so with OA you don't want to let it get out of hand okay you don't want to let it get it so bad or make it so bad that you stop doing what you're doing you stop doing activities that you enjoy you stop doing um, things that let's say may aggravate it but are good for it like exercise Uh, you also stop uh, let's just say walking as much taking the stairs you drive more often things like that now I see this commonly as well with with let's say people that I'm working with uh, who would be who would be 
50, 60 years old, struggling, would have played a lot of sports when they were younger, have this belief that because of the amount of sports they played, they affected their body and they shouldn't have put it through the stress that they did and all this. And when you're young and you're fit, or when you're young, your body will adapt from, from absolutely anything. And it, it, it will as you get older as well, once you take the right measures. But this belief can be massively, uh, it can be a huge limiting belief as well, in that if you're thinking that what you did when you were younger, which is something you can't change when you're older, if you're thinking that that has affected you now, then that's going to always be in the back of your mind and it can cause your pain to increase as a protective thing, okay? So, and I, I one that sticks out in my mind was a, was, is a man who had knee uh, OA, or who has knee OA, let's say, um, and played a lot of sports when they were younger, didn't really understand what contributes to pain and what causes pain, and was finding that they were getting pain when they were on the farm, they were getting pain when they're moving around and they were on a day today when they're getting up out of bed and all that and so bad that they had to go and get uh, a, a knee replacement basically. And I stepped in before a second knee replacement because I was like, we could hopefully manage this a bit better um, instead of setting you back. And basically the, the surgeon said, oh, you're bone on bone. There's nothing you can do about it, which was absolute, absolute cod's wallop when, when you think about it because... That idea of bone on bone doesn't take into account that all the different factors that contribute to pain. Just saying it is an easy fix and then, all right, we'll get a knee surgery and we're good to go. But with this man, there was huge stressors in the background as well because although he's working on a farm, there was uh, the, there was TB on the farm, so a lot of the cattle got affected with that. Obviously, anyone who knows that knows that if it if tb gets into your farm the ones that are affected infected will have to be put down obviously or culled um and at the same time covid was coming in and he had a close relative who was at a very high risk uh very very high risk um for for covid so didn't take that into account and then at the same time was working a job so was sleeping poorly extremely poorly uh every night maybe four or five hours a night uh didn't take any of that into account and just thought that the knee problem was the fact that they played a lot of sports when they were younger, okay? But why would it just kick up now? Why didn't it kick up years ago? So it was a huge, that was a huge learning experience before they got the second surgery to just to talk through, well, okay, I understand all that, or the sports that you played when you were younger, but we need to look at what strength we can work on here. We, we need to look at the mobility that we can, the, or the type of mobility exercises that are going to help you out. And then we also need to look at your lifestyle factors as well. And I guess th I'm tying this story into the next part, which is how to improve your condition. And looking at the lifestyle factors was a huge one. First, we had to highlight all the stressors that were going on, because if you don't, if you're not aware of them, it's very hard to change them. So highlighting the stressors itself in terms of like picking out, okay, well, this relative is a very high risk. Uh, that's obviously going to be in the back of your mind always, and you're going to have to take care of that and you're going to have to make sure that you take care of yourself and you manage your stress better in whatever ways going for walks or or meeting family and friends and enjoying yourself and, and just making sure that you're doing all you can and 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 all the protective measures and all of that and then outside of that then we focus a small bit more on more specific stress management strategies like breathing and stuff like that we looked at increasing strength around the knee and when i'm looking at when i especially when it comes to arthritis or especially when it comes to degenerative condition, I'm more so, or I love to do exercises where the two feet are on the ground because it's supposed to lower body injury because it's programmed slightly differently, slightly differently and your body has to coordinate it a bit more. Now, there is research saying leg extensions help it because they build quad strength. Grand, leg extensions build quad strength. Your body's more comfortable using the quad in that situation and if it's more comfortable, it's not going to give you as much pain. But when has a muscle ever worked in isolation and it, it doesn't and this is why bodybuilders aren't good athletes well let's say field athletes and why field athletes don't look like bodybuilders just having bigger muscles doesn't make sense for performance what it does though is what you're looking at is you want to have you want to be as strong as possible but be able to coordinate that as much as possible and there is research showing that isolating a muscle uh, to build it hypertrophy uh, versus actually working through compound exercises or working through specific e or sport specific exercises uh, there's obviously a reduced injury risk with that working through sport specific exercises than isolating muscle because you get very good at isolating the muscle but the muscles don't get very good at working together 
while in a sports specific exercise you might not have the biggest muscles but you're very well coordinated and each one knows when to take the load and when to contract and when to uh when to relax okay so that's why it is important to get your feet on the ground when you're working on these things so we did that we worked on that a good bit uh worked into pain uh not just worked into pain that'd be crazy we got an understanding of what was contributing to pain uh worked in and around it got a kind of kind of a good grasp on what the most important thing would be to do when you should pull back when you should push on with pain and then we focused a lot on the recovery strategies and the recovery strategies were also lifestyle factors so like increasing your hydration making sure you're taking breaks throughout the day and maybe getting in a nap if your sleep is poor what's affecting your sleep at night are you drinking a lot of caffeine late into the day a lot of we looked at a lot of these different things and we we changed each of them individually well changed them made small changes over time because these were the main factors that were contributing to pain it wasn't the bone on bone itself that was in it maybe that inflammation was was causing a bit of pain at the start and it was maybe a vicious cycle that was kicking up and it was going back and forward back and forward okay but still if you don't take care of all the other factors it doesn't make one bit of difference if you get a knee replacement okay it, it really doesn't you can still get severe pain okay without taking care of the other factors because you still have the high sensitivity in the nervous system so it was first i guess understanding that changing that belief that it, it wasn't just sports when you were younger that caused these things to kick up and the fact was that the fact that you played sports when you were younger probably was one of the main reasons that you were fit and healthy as you were to this day like the man was near 60 years old so it is important to get that understanding and change those beliefs if you don't change beliefs very difficult to to work uh on the body because they re- will those beliefs will interact with everything that you're doing and can affect everything that you're doing so that was it so that's kind of i guess the next section i talked through it there but really what you're looking to do is you're looking to do more movement where that's an issue uh work on mobility to get joint rate joint rate of motion back when you do work on mobility then that actually helps to circulate synovial fluid which helps to helps to regenerate the joint bring more circulation to the joints rejuvenate it whatever word you want to use um but the synovial fluid inside the joint is what, it's what's going to help to nourish it okay then as i said it needs movement it needs circulation to heal if you avoid that it's going to make it a lot worse okay so if you just stop moving that's going to cause that to kick up because when you do start moving again you're going to feel it on the areas that you haven't uh used in a while and it's a good example i guess of when you're getting out in the morning and it takes an hour once you start walking around and you start warming up then things will start to calm down a small bit that's a huge sign of oa that i mentioned at the start or osteoarthritis so it kind of shows that that movement is going to help clear it up a bit more so doing a bit more of that is obviously going to always help you as well now other than that we're looking to get everything else in order okay your sleep has to be good if you're sleeping poorly it doesn't make a difference what other stuff you are doing okay you really do have to get your sleep as good as possible when you can okay because if you're not doing it you're burning the candle from both ends you can do all the training you want all the training in the world but it's not going to make a huge difference because sleep is your main recovery tool so that's why you need to look at that hydration make sure you're drinking enough water really and truly like if you if if the synovial fluid is made up of mostly water and you're not drinking enough of that well then you're going to be like a raisin going around you're going to be dehydrated you're not going to be able to or if you're dehydrated you're going to be fatigued which is going to cause your pain to kick up which is going to affect your mood and affect your energy levels it's all tied together and you need to make sure that you are doing that when you're looking at diet then you're looking at i guess reducing your sugar intake reducing or making sure that you don't have a high salt intake uh avoiding saturated fats trans fats refined carbs or just processed foods in general and then alcohol is another one that's going to affect your sleep it's also going to affect inflammation um can cause pain to kick up a small bit more because you'll be that more fatigued and then for other people it may be dairy okay it may be now i'm just going to just throw it out there for some people it may be dairy. for some people it may not okay i'm not going to just leave i'm i'll leave that on that because 
I don't have a good enough understanding of why dairy would affect it for some people and why it wouldn't affect it for others. So I don't want to go digging into that too much. Um, and I love dairy as well. So I don't want to knock it. <laughs> no, I'm only messing. But other than that, then foods with high in MSG is another one. Okay, so it's all standard stuff. We all know this. Like you, you know this when you're listening to me. I know you're, you're probably taking these off and saying, okay, I understand that. I know that I should... I know, like a lot of people know these things but they don't implement them everyone knows you should be sleeping seven to eight hours how many people actually sleep seven to eight hours a night very little or very few and i know that because clients that jump on my board with me once they actually start tracking sleep it's uh you can see that the majority of people are sleeping like six hours a night and that's if they are sleeping quality sleep six hours a night so our recall can be extremely poor at times and getting an understanding of how other factors are contributing to your pain and your inflammation is really going to help you set yourself up for success because then you can control the other factors. You won't have as much pain and inflammation. You'll be able to get through your rehab, get through your exercises, your activity levels will be higher, your mood will be better. And with that, then you'll be obviously well able to progress faster, okay? And you'll recover faster. And then I would honestly, something that I start to include with clients and i know it's a huge change in it is is using affirmations and using sayings or or getting them to to use their own ones that are beneficial or that would be promoting an optimistic outlook and starting to believe that you can do anything you want is a huge one with this if you get that belief in you that you're actually it doesn't make a difference what this is like i'll go climb kilimanjaro or i'll go climb mount everest whatever it is once you get that belief it's very hard to stop someone it's very hard to stop someone with a real belief in what they want to do and real drive because they'll do what it takes and what what they have to do to get there and if you start to believe that you can do anything you want and you start to believe that this isn't limiting me anymore i will do what i want to do and i will do it whenever i want to do it that will help you across all aspects and that it'll actually make you more confident it'll improve the confidence in your nervous system which means that you'll have less pain in general beliefs are untouched they're an untouched thing in rehab and that they always say change beliefs and attitudes but using affirmations to target the subconscious is a huge one and i think it needs to be implemented more and then i guess really you're looking at just focusing on making incremental changes i know you're saying you have to believe what you do anything you want but to get there you need to just make small changes improve your hydration today fit more mobility and movement exercises into another day okay work get back to the gym and start actually strengthening the areas that need to be strengthened and everywhere else around it small changes every day will make the biggest difference overall okay if you can do that incremental changes will make huge 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 change in future if you can stay consistent with them And I want to, I guess the last one then really is set a functional goal for yourself. Now, functional is a word that's thrown around in everything now. Functional training, cross, like, not crossfit, I was going to say crossfit, but functional training is a huge one that you see. And they're doing crazy stuff like just fucking swinging hammers around, you know, just doing random stuff, random stuff that has no, whatever way they want to call it functional. Grand, it probably is some of it when you look at function but functional in 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 this perspective is like you can't run your goal is to run 5k that's a functional goal it's not reduced pain because reduced pain itself is more of a subjective goal because everyone's going to be different functional run 5k you know when you've done 5k it's functional you're using your body to do it if you do that if you that's what a functional goal is it's actually having that get back to rock climbing okay so is one that I'm working with at the moment. Is the guy I'm working with. Another one could be, I want to be able to train or go to a full training session in GA without having to think about my hamstring. Now, that's a subjective and objective goal, but you will know when you get to a full training session, oh, yeah, well, actually, I was comfortable there. Okay? Or I don't have to think about my knee. They are functional goals, ones that are actually tasks that you have to complete and you're using your body to complete them. Not just swinging a hammer around are not just doing bear crawls till the cows come home, are just doing random stuff and saying it's functional. No, or functional patterns. Like what a load of shite. The, not that, that's just another, no, I won't even go in there right now. But um, yeah, just they're, well, they're just doing random things like, and they're saying it's a functional thing. 
it's not like to do the most functional thing you can do is especially when you're looking at getting back to sport is your sport if that's what you're doing you can be doing all the other crack in the world but unless you start doing the sport that you're doing then functionally like you're not going to be able to return to that sport at the level you want to okay so enough i guess that's that's i want to finish on that set functional goals for yourself if you do you can make huge improvements very fast so guys i'm gonna leave it on that for today um i hope you took something from that if you know somebody who's struggling with arthritis definitely either send them on my page or send them on this podcast it's probably the best thing so at least they'll have a better idea of what to do themselves um you it can be improved it can be improved hugely if you take the time and if you commit to it you have to commit you have to have a clear plan you obviously you'll need support you might need accountability but in general if you set out a goal of what you want to get to you make a plan you will get there okay sometimes it works to reach out for help sometimes you can go at it your alone but as long as you can commit it and you can stay at it that's the most important thing so i'm going to leave it on that um if you were listening to this on let's say itunes i would love if you could leave a five star rating or a comment it really really helps uh the the podcast it really helps promote the podcast um and i i would love if you could do that if you're listening on spotify make sure to subscribe same on itunes and if you are whatever other podcasting platform you're listening to this on i'd love if you could subscribe to it and if you are on youtube just make sure to subscribe subscribe jesus to the mobility tutor on youtube and obviously mobility tutor on instagram as well uh that's all from me today guys the best thing you can do for me is if you share this on your story or if you send it to a friend um that's it goes a long way in helping me promote the podcast and get it to the right people and I suppose this episode you're probably looking for a friend or somebody who is struggling with arthritis whether it be your mother your father your friend your sister your brother yourself make sure to take notes from it just yeah spread the word a small bit I would love that and if anyone is looking for help just send me an email mobilitytutor at gmail.com and we can jump on a call and discuss it in a bit more detail but yeah that's everything for me today guys and I will chat to you all again soon have a good one